Amy. Thanks so much for stopping by. If you're new to my channel, make sure before you leave, you hit the subscribe button and also the notification bell. That way you'll get notifications whenever I post something new. And when the video is over, if you'll watch it clear through, give me a big thumbs up if you like the video and make sure that you share it with all your friends and family. Today I'm going to do something a little bit different. I normally show painted glassware and such, but I also do bridal hangers, wedding dress hangers, however you want to refer to them. This particular one is ready to go except I need to paint a design on it. And I did do staining underneath and I did white paint over the top of it with, after applying crackle medium. So it is crackled and I'm going ahead and putting a rose design on it. And this is a design that I do a lot of painting for on my wedding hangers. Probably need to do some other designs, but this this one that I do, and then if somebody has a special request, they can do that as well. All right, so I'm double loading my brush with the Wicker White and the Berry Wine. This is a multi-surface paint for the Berry Wine. Multi-surface also for Wicker White. All these are folk art paints. The leaves will be done in Thicket, which is an enamel paint, and then Happy Green, which is a multi-surface paint. The brush I'm using is a number 12 flat brush. That's the only brush I'll be using throughout this uh, painting. All right, so let's get started here with the top rose. And as I mentioned, it's a rose pattern, and it's one I do a lot of painting of. It's just pretty, pretty simple. If you saw my glass painting one with the purple rose, it's basically the same rose. So I see I need to get some variations together for the roses because there's so many different types that you can paint. But this one just happens to be one that flows very nicely for me. And I tend to do it a lot just for that purpose. And it's pretty. I, mean, I think it's pretty when it turns, when it's finished, when it turns out. I shouldn't say turns out because it turns out, but when it's done, it's more what I meant. And if you're not noticing, I am a lefty, so I like to try to mention this too because the direction I start my painting in may be opposite of what you would feel comfortable starting to paint. So keep that in mind when you're doing a design. If it's if you are having a hard time following me because of that, just switch directions and do it the opposite. That typically tends to work for people. Again, I think this flows very nicely. And you have to be careful when you're painting on the crackle because sometimes it can lift. I did the crackling earlier today. And it has had plenty of time to dry, but sometimes when you put new paint on it, you just you can't overwork it. I guess is what I'm what I'm trying to say is be careful because the crackle medium will also put some cracks in your design, which is fine. That makes it look. I think it makes it look old, which to me gives it a, a neat look. All right, so we're going to do two buds on either side. If you want to paint more, that's fine. I just like to stop with the two. Some people don't like it too full. It's amazing how picky can, people can be. But, hey, you got to do what they like, right? And yes, I do use folk art enamels on other surfaces besides glass. I've used them on walls, uh, wood, I mean just anything I paint because I've always liked the durability of them. So it's funny to me when they cut, when Plaid came out with multi-surface paints because I'm thinking, you know what, you've had a multi-surface paint for a long time because I have used this one on all kinds of surfaces. It just paints very nicely no matter what surface you're painting on. All right, so now I'm just going to do some leaves that'll come down and around here. And 
And then I actually will do the little kind of little leaves that go around your buds. Put those in. And then I'll continue on with my bigger leaf. And turn it. And I don't allow any drying time in between. It's fine with me if some of the colors come through like you're seeing here, that's fine. And then I'll go ahead on this and just add little leaves down it. I'll make sure that my I turn the turn the paint going the same direction here. And then I'm going to pull some out like that. Like that, and you can wipe some of the paint off there. I don't like to have a lot of paint on my brush. I'm just going to put little strokes in it like that. And then you can also, if you want to, come in here and do some little leaves that would actually be coming off of this other bud. And again, I'm going to make sure I'm pulling them the right direction. And whoops, do the same thing over here. That look a little nicer. And then I'll just put a few, clean that up a smidge here. All right, and then I'll just put a few out here that are trailing away from the rest of the leaves and flowers. And then run a little stem to them. All right. And then I'm going to come over here and basically do something very similar. All right. Is there a favorite flower that you like to paint? If there is, please make a comment down below and tell me what that is. If you have any suggestions on videos you'd like to see me create, I'd love to hear what you're interested in seeing. For me, I think that's one of the hardest things about doing videos is coming up with things that people are interested in seeing. I'm just going to swirl this one over here like that and then continue on doing the little leaves like I did before. And I'm going to pull this over here so it comes out and still make sure I'm doing the same direction on this one. And when I'm saying that, just that I have the lighter green going the same direction as it is on the opposite side or the darker, however you want to look at it. I don't want to cover up the bud really too much there. So I'm trying to be careful with that. And you could space these out a little bit more. Like I said, I try to be cautious because people don't often like the these buds to come clear down the arm of the hanger. So I have to be cautious with that when I'm painting these that I'm not making it too far down. All right, so there you go. And I just leave it like this and let it dry so it'll be ready to be packed up tomorrow. It makes a beautiful hanger for a bride to hang their dress on. All right.
All right, so then I'm going to switch over to a different paint palette and show you one more that I'm going to be painting. Okay, and on this next one, it's a brown wooden hanger with engraving on the arms and then the bride's new name in the center. And I'm going to do Daphiniums. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly. It's kind of an awkward flower to paint on this though because of how they normally grow. So I'm going to do my best. Because normally I just do that, do a single rose at the top, which fits just nicely. But with this, I'm going to have to really work on it. So what I'm going to be using for this one once again is Happy Green, multi surface, Thicket, which is the enamel. And then True Blue, which is an enamel. Moon Yellow, multi-surface. And Wicker White, which is enamel. I am going to try to do this with a smaller brush because of the limited area that I have here. Let's see if I can get this to actually... makes me a little nervous, but we'll see. Give it a shot here. So I'm just using a number 8 flat brush. It's actually a glass painting brush, but as you can see, I don't typically really care what brush I use. And I'm going to use this tool, which is a clay ball making tool, and I use it for dotting. So let's get started. I'm going to do the leaves first, and then hit it with a heat gun before I go on doing the petals of the flower. Like I said, and just bear with me here because I've not actually painted this design before, so it makes me a little nervous. Try to get it in here. Let me see here. Okay. I just got to try to make it small. Come over here with this like that. It's actually supposed to all kind of flow together. Turn it so I can kind of do the same thing over here. Okay, so this is just kind of a hard design to paint in this space. I really wasn't thinking about it when they put that on their paper. It's not something that they actually consulted me and said, hey, can I do this? I'm just like, okay, I'll, I'm go I'll make it work one way or another. All right, I'm going to hit it with the heat gun. I'm going to go ahead and start the actual flower petals. And they're going to be done with this blue. True blue and the wicker white. All right, let's get started here. Again, I have to keep in mind that I need to keep an eye on the size that I'm making them because of what I need to try to fit into this area. Well, that's why I said I'm not too concerned about the, the leaves because I'm going to be painting over them a little bit. Go over that one again. Alright, and I'm going to go over it again. So I'm just pulling the brush up and then pulling it back. Hopefully you can see that. Pulling it up, pulling it back. Pulling it up, pulling it back. All right. 
right, and then I'm going to go over here and do another one on this side. Pulling it in, pulling it up. And then they are going to overlap some, just fine. with the thickness of the paint, even if hitting it with a heat gun is not going to totally dry all parts of it. There we go. I guess that hopefully they like it because it's just not, you know, if I had more of a, more space to create it, I'd be able to make it look more like the actual flower does. But, do the best I can. Do this real good. All right, so we have two buds. I'm going to add one more. It's just going to kind of be overlapping these. I don't like to have too much paint in my brush. And that's what I say in life. Things would be layered. Typically not just one flower, unless that's what kind of flower it is, but if you have a bouquet, you're going to have more than one flower in it, and they're going to be touching, overlapping, so that's why I have no problem with doing that with flowers. Done with this part. All right, so then I'm going to take, and I forgot to say this, I do have a little liner, uh, liner brush. It's a plaid liner brush. It's a number one. And then I'm going to take it to kind of define the center a little bit, just kind of pulling in some white here, even though we have white in the center already. With the type of painting I do, typically we'll use white or another color. Just put those in there. So we'll put this in there a little bit better. Do the same here. And just touching and pulling. Just put it down. I was concerned you wouldn't be able to see it, but I think you can see it okay. Just got to make sure they're thick so they do show up. All right, and then I'm going to try to put a little bit of one in here. This one is overlapping a lot, so it might be a little hard to get all, all of them showing, but we'll do the best I can here. here. Okay. And then what I'll do to finish that off, this is when I, this tool is going to come into play. Now I could wait a little bit longer, but I'm just going to use it now. And the reason why I say I could wait, because with this other paint not being dry, sometimes the top paint when you're dotting doesn't stick. But I think it's doing okay. I don't really want it to be I just want it to be kind of not real specific. I don't, I don't even know what to say. Not real defined. All right, so then I'm going to come up above it and try to put in a couple of these 
longer kind of uh, buds, but I want to try to make them a little bit more defined so that you can tell that that's what they are. Okay, so this is where it makes it a little hard because it's not really enough space. Because this kind of a flower is more of a straight, you know, with flowers branching off from it. So, I might even have a tendency to go with just a single one up here, just to kind of portray that a little bit. And leave it at that. Alright, so then the next part that I'm going to do, actually, whoops, sorry, the box ball. Clean out my brush so I can add the, I don't know if I should put another blue one over here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Maybe I will. Put another blue one like it's going up this way. I just washed my brush, so guess what? To wash it again. All right, and you'll see here in a minute. I just wanted to be able to create it a little bit like it really should be. So in this part, then I'm going to you know, basically have a stem. And I'm going to come down like this and just do like that with it to make it seem as though it had had a purpose. But you could see where it would be prettier if there were more space. and I'll have it like it's going over that direction. Maybe I should put something up there. I don't know. Alright, so I think I'm just going to leave it like that. And hopefully they get they get the idea. Like I said, it's really, really definitely different. It's very hard to do. I might even put some more from yeah, I'm gonna do that. Let's do some little stroke work like that. Even though that's really not typical of this flower. Make it feel like it's filled in a little bit. see. <laughs> they don't like it, they don't like it. So, all right. I guess that I might add a few more just to the top to give it more of an illusion, but anyhow, there you go. I still think the hand-painted ones are very pretty. I just think that a lot of the people are just tying or gluing or whatnot, you know, bows or flowers or whatnot to their hangers, but the hand-painted ones definitely are the best. Anyways, I appreciate you stopping by. Once again, if you haven't already subscribed, please hit that subscribe button, hit the bell notification button, and then if you see the share button at the below this video, that is a good way for you to share it with your family and friends. Give me a big thumbs up if you like this video. And until the next one, have a good one.